U.S. Farm Report, a rural area public relations program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in the listening area and others interested in seeing the farmer receive a fair price for what he produces. Welcome to another NFO program from Tennessee. NFO is a national organization of farmers. NFO came into being through necessity. By necessity, I mean we have to do something to preserve the family-type farm system. When I say through necessity, I also mean farmers are leaving the farm every day. In the United States, 324 farmers leave the farm every day. The reason they're leaving is they can't make a living. Today, 62% of the farmers in Tennessee are in the poverty class. All of us are operating on borrowed money. The only reason we can get the borrowed money is the banks will loan us money on our real estate and not on our farming operation. NFO's purpose is to get the farmers a fair price for the production, principally meat, milk, and grain. In our, on our past programs, we have had producers of meat and we've had producers of dairy products. Today, we have producers of grain. Right now, we're in Hickman County, which produces a lot of corn. To handle this program down here today, we have a member of the National NFO TV Committee, Walter Brown, who will introduce the guest here. Thank you, Herschel. Uh, we have with us here today Mr. W.H. Bell, who operates about a 500-acre uh, farm program in Umphrey's and Perry County, Tennessee. By the way, Herschel, we're in Perry County. Let's give credit where credit's due. Uh, Mr. Bell, I notice you have quite a bit of here, and uh, I know some of the strain that must go with that. How does the cost of this equipment uh, compare with the original price of the equipment that you replaced it? Well, there's about $4,800 difference in the two pieces of equipment, the pl tractor and brake and plow, than the tractor and plow at the time I bought it that I traded to this one. Of course, this is larger equipment. Yes, this is larger equipment. Uh, we also might ask you how does the price of the grain, in this case, of course, corn, compare with the price that you were getting at the time you bought that uh, cheaper tractor? Well, at the time I bought the cheaper tractor, I was getting about $2 a bushel for corn. And now I'm getting $1.40. Looks like something's wrong there to me, old dog. It does to me, too, Junior. You know, these things uh, have a way of uh, getting out of balance. I don't, when our costs go up and our income comes down. I don't know how I'm going to pay for this at $1.40 corn, this new equipment. Let's go over and talk to Mr. Walter Nunley a minute all, and see if he has any ideas about all that. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Nunley is a member of the State Committee of ASPS for Tennessee, one of three members. He is also president of Columbia Production Credit Association. He is also a farmer. He is also an NFO member. Would that build up, Walter? Well, uh, what uh, would you say that uh, uh, the trends that Mr. Bell has referred to affecting the farm credit business? What, uh, what's the picture on this? Well, thank you, Walter, for the nice introduction. I would like to say this in my short period as uh, of association with Columbia Production Credit Association, which is located in Columbia, Tennessee, and we have nine counties, which includes this county and my own. Our loans have increased from $4 million in the past three years to $7 million. But the number of people who are borrowing money has decreased. So you can see that the farmer is borrowing more money, trying to farm bigger in order to overcome this price squeeze that we're in. Uh, with production now, the way it is with the high seed corn, the uh, cost of fertilizer, the spraying, which you'll see in a minute on this tractor, it has just kind of put the farm in position where we've got to have a little bit more for what we produce. I would like to mention, as Walter said, I'm on the state ASCS committee, which 
is a uh, program that the government has in trying to help the farmer in conserving some of the land and water that we have, which is not only uh, to help the farmer, but also the people of the whole country. Because when we lose our land, it's washed away by water, which we do not conserve. Well, we're just not going to have anything here to produce you uh, food in order to eat and uh, the recreation which the water supplies. And um, <clears throat> with that, uh, I, I think that has described some of the programs that uh, we associate with. Now, the government doesn't pay all of this expense. Half of it is paid by the farm. A lot of people think the government pays everything, but they're wrong. It's encouraging the farmer to use his own initiative with them helping a little bit by paying half. Uh, Walter, I believe, if I followed you, that uh, what you said to a large extent is that this equipment that uh, we saw pulled out of here just a minute ago uh, doesn't necessarily entirely belong to Mr. Bell. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I think it shows that in the increase from the uh, three million to the seven, and the four million to the seven million that uh, our production credit is loaning. Yeah. Right now, Walter. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and in in uh, regard to this, uh, now this increase in business may be good for the banks, or in your case, the uh, pr uh, production credit mm -hmm. association. Uh, but what about the uh, individual farmers, the uh, well, businessmen? Well, it's, it's certainly not good on us because I'm a borrower from production credit, and I know some of these other fellows are too. And anybody hates to owe money. I don't care who he is. <laughs> and we might point out also that uh, this business is good for them only up to a point. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, when, that's... when you reach the point that uh, mm -hmm. repayment becomes impossible with a farmer, well, then it is not good for the loan companies yes, also. Sir, and we've got to have something to help us to pay back that $7 million that the farmers are buying in uh, these nine counties in Middle Tennessee. That's mm -hmm. very true, very true. Uh, <clears throat> the next fellow over here is Ralph Fly. Might say that uh, before we go any farther that without exception every man here is an NFO member, so we'll leave that off his introduction. Ralph, however, is... Uh, Vice President, the first elected Vice President in the state of Tennessee from Hickman County. Ralph, we've seen this uh, new large equipment. We've heard what Mr. Bell said. We've heard what uh, Mr. Nunley has said. Why then does the farmer purchase this new equipment in larger and more expensive packages than ever before if uh, his credit rating is going under this kind of a strain? Well, Walter, there could be several reasons, but I think one of the primary reasons he's doing this, and as an average, he's taken over his neighbor's farm, and in doing this, he, he has to have uh, larger equipment, and at the same time, another reason would be that he is doing this with less labor. This equipment is not necessarily his wishes every time, but it's a necessity uh, that he has to do this in order, he's working 16 hours, he takes over his neighbor's farm, he only has so many hours to work, and this is a necessity and not a wish of the farmer. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what happens to him? You said he's working 16 hours, uh, and Mr. Bell, I believe, mentioned that he's growing uh, grain on 500 acres. Now, I know he didn't always do this because I've known Hall Trough a long time. Uh, what do you suppose has happened to his manpower requirements <coughs> as he has uh, taken on his neighbor's farm in addition to his own, the one that's been driven out of farming? Well, I, I imagine his manpower requirements have gone up, judging from the size of equipment he's had. He's trying to offset it, these man, manpower requirements with this larger equipment. And, and uh, also, he's working longer hours himself, I'm sure. Uh, in other words, uh, instead of working 16 hours a day, he's taking over twice the amount of farming, working, what, that'd be 32 hours a day? Roughly 32 <laughs> hours a day. Of course, he has become more efficient. Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, maybe he's only working about 24 or 26 hours a day. I imagine. Um, in view of all these facts uh, and this buildup and so forth, do you think, well, do you know from your experience, is the farmer any better off income-wise as a result of this increased acreage and uh, increased efficiency? No, he, he is not. He is worse off. In, in taking on this increased acreage, he has taken on a greater responsibility so far as management, 
uh, a greater responsibility so far as debt. Our income on a national average on the farm has been about 5% of the gross. And as any, all of us know, uh, farming this barely, if it does, pay the interest. So I think he, he's, he's worse off in general than he was before. Uh, in other words, it's, uh, it's a little bit like the fellow that went to the dentist uh, with the toothache. Uh, he was told now, this is going to hurt for a little while, uh, but after a while, just think how much better it's going to feel. Uh, we've been told that uh, as our neighbors leave the farm, uh, and we have the prospects that maybe we're going to join them, that this is going to hurt for a little while. But uh, after it's uh, all over, why then there's going to be somebody that's a whole lot better off. Uh, have you seen any of those fellows yet? No, I haven't. I in, haven't spite, seen them, no. in spite of the fact that two and a half million people in better have already left the farm. I haven't seen any of them in Hickman County. Uh, well, I frankly don't know where to tell you to go to look for them. <coughs> Next fellow over here uh, mentioned that uh, Mr. Fly is the or was the first elected vice president in the state of Tennessee. Mr. Garner, Ed Garner, was the first elected president in the state of Tennessee. Hickman County was the first charter NFO organization in the state. Uh, Ed is still president of that county, and might add, doing a real good job uh, in the organization. Ed, the farmer usually is classed, as we see here today, as a producer, and certainly he is that. We look around us, we see the uh, tractors flying the furrows, we see this new equipment, we see the prospect this fall of uh, corn standing where we are standing on freshly plowed ground today. What about the farmer as a uh, well, what about him as not a producer but as a purchaser? Walter, the uh Farmers, the farming industry is one of the biggest industries in the United States. Uh, we are a very good customer because of the fact that we uh, buy approximately $30 billion worth of goods and services each year to produce these crops and this livestock. We buy approximately $2.5 billion worth of fuel and uh, lubricants, which we are among the nation's top petroleum buyer. We also purchase about $2.5 billion worth of uh, new tractors and equipment, the uh, equipment that we just seen go through the field here. So we are a large producer in that line. We also uh, buy or purchase about uh, $2, million, $2 billion worth of fertilizers and lime. And we are the nation's top uh, user of rubber. So we are very big in the, in the consumer uh, realm. You know, when you mentioned rubber, it just reminded me, I don't know why I did it, uh, but a few days ago, for some reason, I sat down. Well, actually, I didn't sit down. I've been too busy lately to sit down. I guess I thought about this on the run. But it occurred to me, and I counted, that uh, on the farm that I help operate, we have to keep on the ground at some time or other during the year over 70 rubber tires. Uh, and this was not, including my boy's bicycles, by the way. That's a whole lot. <laughs> That's a lot of rubber. And I just imagine that if you visited the farms across the nation, you would find that similar things are true. In fact, just look at these tractors that we've seen here today. Uh, rubber tires and more rubber tires. The same thing's true of the other uh, facilities and the other things that we need in order to produce. That's right. And then I might add that uh, if the farmers could get the income that is coming to him, it would mean that more of these materials would be purchased, which would increase the purchasing power of the entire nation. That is very true. You know, I, I'm driving a car that uh, it's getting up and crowding 100,000 miles. Detroit uh, recently has been a little bit unhappy because they haven't been able to sell quite as many cars as they would like to. Well, let me tell you if uh, the income on the farm had been at parity for the past few years, they wouldn't have to hunt me up. I'd be looking for them. Right. I'd want a new car tomorrow. Well, uh, at least uh, the first rainy day. We could all use it. <laughs> well, Ed, let me walk on over here, and we'll talk just a minute with Johnny Faulkner, who is 
from Humphreys County, Tennessee. I believe, uh, Johnny, you told me that you are the secretary of the NFO organization in this county. That's right. And I also believe you've been doing a little pitching for NFO on the side. Well, I pitch for NFO just about every opportunity I have, uh, Walter. Uh, apparently, that's about the only thing that we have uh, to uh, put us back on a level in the economy that we rightly deserve is NFO. Well, now, while well, we're on that uh, subject and getting along that line, <clears throat> let me ask you a question that I believe you can answer in very few words. In your opinion, what is the greatest need in American agriculture today? Walter, I think we have two. Both of them are uh, very closely related. One of them is uh, reasonable profit over the cost of production of our farm production. And the other, which is just as important, is stability in prices. The farmers over quite a number of years have had to outguess the market. And as you know, that's rather hard to do. Maybe we'll have an increase in price one week and a decrease in price of our production the next week. And stability is very important as uh, uh, a reasonable profit over the cost of production of the stuff that we produce. That's true, and in addition, you mentioned fighting the prices. That's just one of the things that a farmer has to uh, fight. Um, among them insects and uh, weather and what have you. Now, for example, it's almost the uh, first of June here, and I'm satisfied Mr. Bell would have liked to have had this field planted uh, three weeks ago. But uh, he's like I am. It's been almost three weeks since we could put a plow in the ground, uh, just maybe a couple of days. And these things build up along with uh, the uncertain prices to make farming kind of an uncertain living. Now then, in view of these things, and I've already mentioned that along with others, you're a member of NFO. Why did you become a member? Walter, it became apparent to me that something had to be done to uh, take care of the farm farmer's economic problem. And after rather uh, strict search for something that might solve the problem, I decided that NFO was the only solution that we had. And as every farmer realizes, we have got to overcome this difference in price of the stuff that we have to purchase and what we have to sell. The only way that that we have found so far that even looks reasonable to do that is through collective bargaining. Of course, the NFO offers that program. Well, we realize, of course, that the primary purpose of NFO, the primary reason that any of us became members of NFO, was to take action toward getting fair prices at the marketplace. But speaking for myself, I have found that since I've been in NFO, there have been some secondary benefits. Uh, and just as a matter of interest, let's talk to these fellows and see if they found that way too. Ed had just told uh, Mr. Fortner over here that since I've been in NFO, although I joined for the primary reason of working for a better price, I found some secondary benefits. Have you found it that way? Yes, I think we could uh, mention maybe several benefits that we've received from NFO. And uh, one of these would be that uh, we understand each other's problems better. Uh, we are not as individuals anymore. Uh, we are more unified, would be, I'd say, one of the benefits. Ralph, uh, have you found any secondary benefits in NFO? Yes, Walter. Uh, one of these benefits is that I know more farmers uh, the county over before NFO came to uh, our county, I, I knew the farmers in my immediate community, but now when I think of farming in Hickman County, I think of the entire farming population of Hickman County, and this to me has been a great benefit and satisfaction. What about you, Walter? <clears throat> well, uh, I like to say this, I think, not counting myself, but it has tended to 
make leaders out of some of the farmers, which uh, you don't usually think of a farmer as a man who uh, gets in the limelight. I mean, he does his day's work and uh, tries to sell his what he produces. But since NFO has come into our county, several of the people have you just interviewed. Uh, I mean, they know how to take a meeting and keep it going, and it's just, uh, it's been such a, it's brought out the uh, person, really, that, uh, of what he really is and, and what he can do. It's, uh, I think that's one of the uh, secondary benefits that I think has been so important with the, with the, uh, the, the men of the county, uh, Walter. I think all these have been true. Um, they ha we have uh, learned to know each other better. We've developed some new leadership. We have seen several cases where the uh, men of the county have come forward to be counted in a new program. These things, however, uh, in and of themselves, do not bring us a uh, the end. They do not bring us the fair price. Uh, <clears throat> Ralph, it occurred to me uh, a conversation that we had at home not long ago, uh, and we mentioned that uh, a few years ago we looked at our neighboring farmer, and uh, we saw that looked like he was making things pretty well. Looked like we were uh, going pretty well, or he was going pretty well, while I was going backwards. Now, what under the world uh, was I going to do about that? We could look, and uh, well, our neighbors had uh, new tractors and uh, new air conditioners and uh, new this and new that. Uh, <coughs> And I think that NFO has developed within each one of us the knowledge that uh, our neighbors are in the same boat that we are. If they have a new tractor, uh, very likely they uh, lopped off a chunk of credit to pay for it. Uh, if I bought something else, well, I was getting it the same way. We didn't realize these things about each other, but through NFO we do. We realize we're all in the same boat. We realize that we've all been going the same way and have the same way to go. What's it going to take to get there? Well, Walter, I think there's a lot could be said about it and uh, a lot of different routes, but we've got to have a price to get there. And uh, when we talk about price, of course, uh, we automatically think of NFO. And, uh, Although, as you said, uh, you uh, watched your neighbor, and he was seemingly doing better than you were, and he used that credit. We've used, all of us have used that credit a long time, and it, uh, it's going to come to the place where we're not going to be using it, we're going to be abusing it. And uh, price is the only thing that's going to answer my problems and your problems as farmers. It answers has answered the problem for labor and uh, all the segments of our economy. Price is a must. Farmers are no exception. That is true, as you've mentioned, for every segment of the economy. We can't purchase without purchasing power. We can't uh, feed and clothe our families without purchasing power. I, I think it was mentioned a while ago that if parity had been had for the farmers for the past several years, we'd see more equipment in the field like this we've seen today. We'd see more new tractors, more new corn planters. You know, we've talked about parity for quite a bit and quite a number of years. Ed, I wonder if uh, we really, as a group of farmers, understand what parity is. I'm afraid not. The biggest majority doesn't. What does parity mean to you? Uh, it means that, well, I have to just go back to about 19 and 10 and 14 when the nation's economy was on balance. That is, all segments of the economy. And since then, the uh, farming uh, purchasing power and what he receives has gone down and the rest of the economy has gone on, gone on and left. In other words, they, their purchasing power has increased. Ours has decreased. 
Uh, I understand ours has decreased some 17 percent, where theirs increased some 30 percent. And uh, uh, to bring everything in relative balance with one another, we all have to be equally as far as purchasing power is concerned, and that's where the farmers are lacking. Uh, right now, we don't have 100 percent parity, and as long as we don't, uh, we can't expect to uh, survive as a number one uh, industry in the nation. Uh, they could be more set about parity, I know, but uh, we just don't have the purchasing power that we should have to keep things going. I think that, uh, to me, the thing that made me understand what parity means to me as a farmer is this. 100% parity, now we all know what par means. That means that we're on an equal with our uh, fellow workers in other fields of labor in endeavor. Parity means that we're getting the same thing that we are, uh, that they get as take home pay. Now then, when we're operating on 75% parity, that simply means that I'm not getting quite as much as the balance of the economy and uh, well, now, I don't think it takes anyone with a PhD to figure out this. Uh, where, which end of the row is the 25% missing? On the buying end, where our purchasing power is, where's our profit? The profit isn't there, really. We, uh, uh, our cost is there, but our uh, Income is just not there, so it's on the income end. It's not on the purchasing end, actually. That's what I was trying to uh, right. trying to get through there, right. because you know I guess very few businesses operate with a 25 percent profit. Right. Uh, I'm sure agriculture is not one of them, and uh, therefore, when the top part of that parity figure is the part of the figure that we could use for the purchase of more new equipment, the repaying of loans, for actually just flat staying in business. Right. Well, it's been said that, well, it's been proven that the farmer's only receiving some five or six percent returns on his investment. So you can see that this only takes care of the interest involved without any uh, income for your work, for your management, and so forth and so on. That's very true. NFO presents a positive program in agriculture. NFO presents a program of action. Mr. Fortner, have you seen any results of NFO action during the few short months that you've been a member? Walter, I think so. I think it's very apparent that that NFO has been responsible for some of the, of the increases that we have had. Uh, as you know, uh, a little over a year ago, some of our uh, experts predicted that hog prices, for example, would have very little increase throughout uh, last summer, and we did see a substantial increase in the price, and I personally feel that NFO was responsible for at least a part of that. I agree with you, couldn't agree with you more wholeheartedly. Friends, are you, as a farmer, a member of NFO? Have you joined the NFO team for collective bargaining in agriculture? Actually, do you know the facts about NFO? It could be that you're in a county where NFO has not yet become organized. If so, let me invite you to step over into one of your neighboring counties where perhaps NFO is in full swing, and then Find out the facts about NFO from yourself and from an NFO member. Become a member of the NFO team, the team for action in agriculture, a positive purpose, and a powerful plan. And that is NFO. Thank you. U.S. Farm Report, a rural area public relations program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and by others interested in seeing the farmer receive a fair price for what he produces.